welcome back to another episode of the Zero Empty Spaces podcast, episode 41, with Palm Beach Gardens resident artist Clifton Webb, here from his beautiful studio inside of uh, Legacy Place Shops. If you didn't know about Zero Empty Spaces, myself, Evan Snow, and my business partner, Mr. Andrew Martineau, as arts advocates and community builders and creative entrepreneurs, came up with an initiative to activate vacant commercial real estate spaces so artists like him could have space to create and collaborate affordably outside their homes. It's provided a myriad of win-win-win benefits for the artists, the properties, and the communities alike. If you'd like to find out more information, you can log on to www.zeroemptyspaces.com. But the point of the podcast is to connect you, the viewer, with the talented artists like this young man that make the program what it is. Um, and one of the more talented artists I've ever seen. All right. So without much further ado, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself at a high level and how you initially got started in the arts here. Okay, well, art started for me early on uh, as a kindergarten kid. I was active at making things. I always enjoyed making things. That was one of the big thrills in my life was maybe just to, to be by myself, but while alone, I found it interesting to pull together different things. It could be any different media. It didn't have to be pain. And I especially enjoyed sculpture, just literally taking uh, one form and putting another together with it and, and adding texture to it. But literally creating with three-dimensional form. And I, I enjoyed that so much until Upon uh, entering high school and then on to college, I was real active. Well, in high school, I should say, I didn't take an art class until 12th grade. I was active in art, uh, in the various arts and crafts classes, but I didn't take an art class until 12th grade. And where was this that you grew up? I grew up in Baton Rouge, where is which it? is north of, of is the capital of uh, Louisiana, which is just north of, 80 miles north of New Orleans. Again, I was born in New Orleans, and uh, because of the circumstance of the time, and uh, well, I like to say, uh, I was born in the Jim Crow era. Yes. Sure. Yes. Well, you got those numbers. Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems so strange to realize I have to say to myself, "You were in the Jim Crow era." And yeah, I, I, I realize now, but it takes a few seconds. But anyway, uh, I enjoyed making this stuff backwards and forth, going and coming. And now it's like after having living this life. You realize, wow, I'm still doing it. And one might call it a little crazy to be interested in making things, but as we know so well, people from the beginning of time, this is what they did. Our early existence is marked by our our, our making things, our sure. making the very tiny object to uh, uh, cave, cave drawings? Yes, yes. Cave drawings, the Venus of Philadelphia, to not to mention we get to the pyramids. And it was all about making things. And we can't realize how valuable that is. And if you're an engineer, and sometimes they, 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 they run hand in hand when uh, we're talking. And all of our being, I think, has to do with with making things, that's 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 what we do. Sometimes good, bad, but that's we we make things, and it you know it raises questions like, well, what are we here for? And it appears to me is that we're here to to make things. Although that crowds the earth and so on, and, and maybe one day, maybe not, we'll get to understand what the meaning of all this is and why we are. In, doing this. I don't think we could just merely just sit around and uh, allow for life to pass us by. 
Correct. And I even think sometimes that in this idea of making things, uh, we might be able to to enhance the place. Not that we haven't, but we can continue to enhance. That would, it, it makes me think about those esoteric things when I think about um, making art. Uh, because it's, for me, it's, it is so real, it is such an automatic thing, until I can't imagine us Again, just sitting around and, and, and doing nothing for all the leisure that they say that <laughs> we're about bringing. Uh, I said, all that's, all that's good if it allows us more time to do something else. But at the same time, we, because I think that we are makers and we have to be, we have to be making stuff, all mm -hmm. these, uh, because we know we need to be moving. Mm -hmm. And if we're not moving, well then, hmm. that's a cause to die if you're mm -hmm. not moving. And we have to be active moving, just like all those other uh, people or uh, creatures we find in, in, in nature there. They're all moving, well they're moving fast or slow, but they're all... Moving. I have a saying I love, activity creates activity. Yeah. And it wasn't always an automatic thing. Some people are born with the gene, mm -hmm. some people are born with the skill. You had mentioned to me before when we were speaking that when you were at uh, LSU and you were going through your course selection, uh, you had a, a aha moment, a trigger. Can you tell us kind of how the transition went from kind of dabbling in art early on high school and kinder from kindergarten to high school to that moment at LSU and kind of how that took you on this path? Uh, LSU was wonderful. High school was great for me, as I know a lot of people have a difficult time with, with uh, being in high school. My daughter happened to be but I had a great time in high school. I had a fantastic time in college. And it's like just so much, for me, it was like, so much good came out of it. Of course, I became aware of myself during this process, but I, 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 of course, I knew there was more for me, but I, making this art was uh, the first and foremost for me, and uh, I just continued it. I continued it, not trying to catch up with where I am. <laughs> but you mentioned you went to study architecture. Architecture. Yes. Yes. I, and so, what was that? Pro what was the process like? Because that architecture is an art form of creativity in, in that way. But going through the course selection, you mentioned you had some thoughts and some moments that kind of triggered this. There were the remedial programs. Well, they weren't remedial, but there were the prerequisites. Preliminary. Yeah. Yes. There were the prerequisites for architecture, and everybody had enrolled in the fine arts courses. So after uh, being in those fine arts courses, it made me realize that architecture is great, but they don't have this kind of freedom. We are, the, the artists, they, 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 there's some rigorous things that we have to do, but art seem to be generally freer. You can be free, there's some fantastic <laughs> architecture going you around. Can definitely be, you can definitely be free. Yes. yes. That's what we'll get to. Being the artist, I mean, golly, I could, I could take it in and uh, zip it right out in a brand new form. I didn't have to wait on anything. It could happen automatically. Sometimes it might take a little longer time. I make sculpture as well. And sometimes it, you know, may take a little while to produce some sculpture, but uh, uh, that was just, a way to have a little longer time with 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 experience in whatever it is I'm trying to make. For instance, I'm uh, I, I, I I'm, I'm making these things, but it might take uh, five, ten, fifteen minutes, or a few days, or a few months later, and that just gives you more time to explore. And exploring was 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 the key in trying to see new and different exciting things and as this art person you get the idea or you you you, you find yourself 
literally activating yourself to become uh, just a new kind of imaginative, uh, just a new kind of risk taker about things. Uh, just finding us uh, once again as 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 one to come to life. I find myself. I was in a fascinating place once again. It was, it was living the living the art life was <laughs> was that was interesting. Also, I, I I I don't think about it too much, but I know I do live uh, maybe because what people have told me. I do live a different life from. Lots of other people uh, that say you might be sensitive and care about things and the like, and then sometimes you find the artist doing all those things, being sensitive and caring, but at the same time being slightly on the outside of, of, of all of that. And being free, and that's one of the things you kind of just illustrated. In architecture, you kind of have to stay within the lines, obviously, of what you can build, but with art, and especially with your art, um, it's very free. You're very. You're able to express yourself fully. Um, why? Uh, large scale, smaller scale, sculpture, painting. Um, you grew up at a very interesting time in a very interesting place. Who were or what were some of the inspirations or influences that helped contribute to your artistic lens and your? style as it eventually developed into what it is today. There were a number of teachers uh, that were uh, just special to me. One of my major professors, his name was uh, uh, Armin Shaler. And uh, Armin made me aware of a special guy by the name of Frank Hayden. He taught, I, I knew Frank Hayden, but he gave me a, a, a a bigger awareness, an expanded awareness of Frank Hayden. Frank Hayden produced, in Baton Rouge, he produced a number of, 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 of gigantic sculptures for Baton Rouge. And I got to know him, and he happened to have been an African American that produced more art than anyone else in the community. He was good. He studied under Ivan Meskovich. And uh, this is just an incredible sculpture. So I got to meet him. And uh, then I, I, I was thinking about this, and uh, <laughs> Bob Thompson came to mind. Bob Thompson happened to have been, other than knowing Frank Hayden, he was the first African American that I got to know of that I got to know about. I looked at his face, saw him, and I, now I can see them all over. And uh, for me, this was like before I got to know uh, Romare Beard, which is very popular these days. I happen to have a few of those, but hmm. I, got to, uh, I got to meet and know Romare Beard along the way. And Betty Sarr, Elizabeth Catlett, uh, and again, I'm from that Jim Crow era, so I got to know people in, 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 a, in a particular group. And that was just, I met lots of artists. What was that group? What was that group? Uh, was it like a collective of artists? It, it wasn't a collective, but it, once, it was African American artists that I got to know a lot. Local of to Louisiana? No, no. Uh, Frank Hayden was the, the, the major local one. And of course, that was John Scott who. Uh, lived in New Orleans and I met him upon uh, becoming full-time in New Orleans a good while ago. He was an incredible artist, incredible artist. Uh, there were Elizabeth Catholic, Betty Sarr, Romare Beard, Frank Hayden, uh, uh, <laughs> and, and, and there's just so many names I could just go down the list and say, I, I got to meet them. You, you know one of the things that I, I'm it's dawning on me now more apparent as you share your background with me is that shows through in your work is the color and the vibrancy that I associate with the culture of New Orleans and Louisiana and Baton Rouge and Church to a certain extent, um, which is, you know, very bright, very vibrant, uh, very fluid. Um, 
how would you? I I I could. I don't think I can do justice. For those that are looking at these works, and I'll, I'll hold this one up. Um, how would you describe your your work, your style, what you're producing, at least at least now here? I I, I hear young people and, and that are not so young. I hear them talking about a kind of futurism, and uh, I think of myself as a futurist as well. I think of it in a lot of cases as a takeoff of, of African art, and I'm just one of those that's fitting in the curve, following the lines, and being a participant in, in, in what was old, and trying to make it new again. And wow. I, I saw this, I saw this in, I, I saw this in ancient times, or observing ancient times. I know that this is what they were doing. If they were living now, they would be, could be doing something in a similar kind of way. But I think of myself as, as of course, as being a primal that's indicative to being African. And being such, and people say like, oh, you're making things like Picasso. <laughs> I made things like this when I was in the womb long before there was a Picasso. You know, because I'm, 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 I'm African, and I'm making things in a similar kind of way that uh, if I was one of those people on the block dancing, it's the same kind of, it's the same, Kind of thing. I'm making this as a result of having been of this of this primal concern that has just walked it into today. Trying to, to change. You see these little things. Please. Yeah. And and then uh, that, that that may have some in uh, look of Africa, but it's like you see lots of animals in here. It's like I'm trying to find out how to root out, you know, what's my literal thing and how it is like all those ethnic groups that might have been happening throughout Africa. Yeah. And it's your, it's your own very unique um, creative interpretation and expression. Um, I, I, I mentioned to you, it's very um, interesting. Uh, you, you paint with your headphones in, so sometimes you wouldn't notice that I was watching you from the other side of the door, but to kind of watch you go through the process, um, sometimes on the floor, um, sometimes on the wall. Um, if you, if you wouldn't mind sharing, what what mediums um, and what what do you use uh, to create this? Because it looks looks not like anything I've ever seen before. Well, these are a watercolors with wash and uh, watercolor pencils. Uh, primarily, primarily watercolor, and for some reason, when I came down uh, three years ago to Florida, to North Palm Beach, Florida, I, I, I needed to work. Uh, watercolors were easy to I can I work in literally a, a variety of materials: wood, metal, stone, fabric, and fiber. I, and and, and I, I enjoy it all. Uh, however, at that moment, uh, I was living at my girlfriend's place, and I normally I don't like to necessarily make a mess. I can and I do sometimes, but. Uh, I, I do if I want to, but mm -hmm. I'm, um, I'm one of those that uh, wouldn't necessarily make a mess if, yeah. It's a controlled mess. Yes, it's a, and you do a really good job of, thankfully, not damaging the floors in this beautiful space yeah. here in, in Legacy Place, but it, it's, a, it's a really beautiful, not only process, but a beautiful outcome, and rightfully so, I mean, you, you've had a very illustrious career. Could you maybe, I know you're very humble and modest, but could you give us just a small sample of your CV and some of the places that you've exhibited and been and been shown over the years? Uh, at 
president of the Auckland Museum and the New Orleans Museum of Art. Uh, and, and there's probably some other places that just don't come to mind. I, I exhibited in New York a couple of times. I was in, uh, it's no longer in existence. I was in the Village Voice. Oh, was, yeah. Wow. And uh, they, they, they pointed me out as one of the most likely to succeed at one time. Me and Betty Blyden, I think it was in Petty. Uh, some other pop artists that have, that, have done, that have done quite well. And then after a point, I said, wow, this art thing is, is so crazy. I mean, you know, you watch how things go up and down. And you say, like, what is of worth and what is not of worth? I said, God, please. I'm not sure if I want to participate in all this. This is so. It's a lot. Yes, and, and it's and it's and and you can understand something of the economics about it, uh, but it was it was so crazy. So after a while, I just said, "Come on, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make stuff. I'm I'm not gonna concern myself with that." And that's kind of where I am today, like everybody. And that's. I'm not interested, and it's hard to say. I think it's a really good thing to make money, but I'm not interested in this for making. You're not making art to sell. No. You're making the art that you want to make. This is your creative outlet. This is your expression. Um, and this is definitely your very own unique style, for sure. And I've seen so much art in my life that, I mean, a pretty picture of a flower with great technique is, is wonderful and it, it certainly serves its purpose into your design or otherwise, but the art that moves me at this stage of my life and career is the art that the artist is paying to make, that they're almost woken up sometimes yes. at three in the morning yes. and they have to create and that really speaks from their soul. Yes. Not, that, not that you have to be tormented, but in, in, in a way, I, I, I think you are, even with all that so-called freedom, I think it is a kind of torment that because you have to do it. I don't know what that's like to other people sure. to do that, but this is one of those things, it's, 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 it's like uh, using toilet facilities. It's one of those things that you have to do. <laughs> And I didn't even really consider, and, and you know, I'll, I'll let you, you know, think about this, but like, there might be some subconscious ancestral pressure mm -hmm. with the role and responsibility uh, of yeah, uh, paying yeah. homage to an your ancestors and the ones that came before you, that this is your calling and your purpose in life to create this. Interestingly put, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's really phenomenal and, and um, I, I, I give you a lot of credit, kudos, and you, you've uh, certainly earned it. You've had a well-established career. It's very modest, very humble. When I saw your application come in for Zero Empty Spaces and I saw your CV, um, I was just moved. And then obviously when I saw your work, it, I was really humbled to have you join the program. Um, and we're, we're, we're glad that by making space like this available, you were able to find us, you were able to take an interest and join. Um, I guess with that being said, what do you like about having a studio to create in outside of your home? Uh, it just so happens that uh, I've had a studio space uh, at home <laughs> until Katrina. Some of us may remember oh, that. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, uh, I've, I've worked in. I had, I had a big space, uh, really. Huge space. Uh, I can say maybe uh, about 50 feet long and maybe about 25 feet wide. Of oh wow! Places just to work. And that was just one area of my studio. It's a beautiful little studio I had, big and little studio that I had. And after Katrina, I I I I, I found a space. In Baton Rouge, I moved from New Orleans to Baton Rouge and found a space, and I worked in a, in, in, with a group of people, and and that was good. And here I am now, and it's not like going back, but I found myself where it's 
I needed to to get out. It, it was fine. I, I worked sure. on a on a on a on a table maybe about this high. Or a, it was a big coffee table, just just slightly larger than the size of these images, and. Uh, I needed to uh, be out, and, and I, yes, a part of it was <laughs> COVID. Mm -hmm. But I needed to be out, and this provided the opportunity to to get out, to literally to see people, and have the camaraderie of uh, camaraderie of uh, other people, sharing uh, and, 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 and what we do. Amen. And getting, uh, you know, some, some interest and feedback from the general public that wanders in. Um, if you uh, weren't sure, if you haven't been here before, we're here in uh, the Legacy Place Shops in Palm Beach Gardens off of PJ Boulevard in North Palm Beach. Uh, this is one of the nicest art studios you'll probably ever see as this was a former Woodhouse Day Spa. Um, and so the, a lot of the rooms were either former massage rooms or I think this might have been like the waiting room after you got a massage. Um, so really nice finishes. He has a <laughs> fireplace in here and a mantle. Um, if you haven't been here yet, um, you can join us for a very special event and initiative that we're glad to support and partner with the Palm Beach Cultural Council on. They created uh, a first initiative, uh, inaugural initiative of uh, Open Studios Day countywide throughout Palm Beach County on Saturday, May the 20th from 12 to 5 p.m. inviting you to explore, I believe, at least over 60 working artists um, throughout the county, maybe 60 locations and over 100 artists. I'm going to double check. Um, and it's a free event. We have 21 artists here in Zero Empty Spaces Palm Beach Gardens. We also have another location in Palm Beach in Boca Raton Innovation Campus, the former IBM headquarters. But there is going to be artists, North Palm Beach, South Palm Beach, East, West, um, everybody else in between. And it's part of uh, the month-long celebration of arts in Palm Beach County called Mosaic, which has a lot of great things from performing arts and, and theater and music as well. Uh, we're going to be hosting a podcast just actually after this uh, with Jessica Ransom from the Cultural Council to share more info and you can find more information online. Um, we also have open studios going here second Saturday of the month and the studios are open daily between 12 to 5 p.m. But on the open studio days, more of the artists are here in person if you want to meet them, discover, have conversations, so on and so forth. So we encourage you to look that up. Two other things that I, I uh, would like to share on uh, May 7th, we have our next artist potluck. I host it at our Gulfstream Park location, which is in Hollandale Beach, which is South Broward. Um, it's going to be part of something called 10 Days of Connections that our friends from Radical Partners uh, put together. And I host the potluck generally uh, for to invite artists to uh, connect, engage, and get inspired by having a meal into the discourse mm -hmm. with their peers and contemporaries that they know them or not. We sit around a long table, everybody brings a dish for five or six people, have them introduce themselves, talk about their work, and that provides opportunity for feedback and collaborations and insight. Um, so that'll be on May 7th, 5.30 p.m., that's a Sunday, uh, at Gulfstream Park, uh, our Gulfstream Park location in Hollandale, um, part of this 10 Days of Connection, which is a really great thing to get people connected in the community. Um, and then the last one I'll share, which we're excited, we're rolling out a workshop series of business topics for artists. Um, and on June 3rd, we're going to have an art and business law lawyer. Um, share with us on like the intellectual property of law, consignment, contracts, uh, agreements, uh, best practices. Jessica Schrademan, she's a, a true art lover and supporter of the arts. That's also going to be at our Zero Empty Spaces Gulf Street Park location. It's going to be a free event. Yeah. Um, so we'll be posting this on our website, on our event page, on Facebook, Eventbrite, all those good things. So you can uh, take a look at that there. Um, and you can find us at zeroemptyspaces.com and at zeroemptyspaces. If they'd like to find you on the interwebs and social media, where can they find some of your work here? One of the ways is you look up artistscliptonweb.com. Artistscliptonweb.com. And you can get to see a few images of mine. And also on Instagram, 
you can find me at Clifton underscore G Web. I think it's something like that. Amen. Yeah. And we'll tag it in the captions here in the show notes. I, I would sincerely, if you are interested in having a conversation with a living legend, um, come here, tour the studio, meet Clifton, see some of his phenomenal works. Um, it's been a pleasure to get to know you, support you, and, and just have you know conversation and talk shop with you. Uh, absolutely fascinating gentleman, fascinating work. Um, we appreciate you tuning in. We hope you'll join us at uh, one of our upcoming events, open studios or otherwise. We also have grand opening of uh, Celebration of a Space in Fort Myers at Bell Tower on May 13th. And we are going to be announcing soon grand opening for our newest space in Richmond, Virginia, uh -huh. which is our, our third state we've expanded to. And we'll be announcing that grand opening soon. Uh, any questions, email info at zeroemptyspaces.com, log on the website, social media, all that good stuff. And we look forward to seeing you here in the studio. All right. Cheers.